What's up, Doombox? Tony Scangili here with a team review for Shield. Now, this is going to be kind of a two part review. We're going to discuss uh, the core of the Shield team, which is, of course, the minions as well as Nick Fury, and the uh, Coulson variant, which is specifically useful for war defense and at over investment levels, I guess literally anything, but everything's usable at over investment except Nebula. So, uh, just to talk a little bit about shield shield has gone through quite a bit for the longest time shield was one of the best if not the best teams in the game uh, usable in every possible game mode the best option for any place you could use characters that they would be allowed and as time has progressed they've kind of been relegated to the back of the line they just don't do what they used to now they still can walk through a global node and they absolutely still can do dark dimension one and a handful of the characters would be absolutely phenomenal for dark dimension two um, they're great on war on offense they still will beat teams that said uh, they've kind of been relaxed or maybe upstaged a little by some of the newer teams like characters like aim that are both a little bit easier to farm uh, aren't all skill characters which is a huge issue with shield and uh, are useful uh, in lieu of other characters. So uh, with Nick Fury probably undergoing the Iron Man retirement treatment where his event will be uh, placed as a permanent event over the next couple of months, uh, it's good to kind of look at it now because it's more likely that players will be having uh, access to S.H.I.E.L.D. sooner and what S.H.I.E.L.D. can do for them early and then of course what S.H.I.E.L.D. will do for them in the end game. So real quick, I'm going to take this particular version of shield i'm going to bring them into a blitz fight this is still one of my favorite versions the only problem with this team is they take forever as we talk about their availability so shields availability is weird right so pretty much all of the minions are farmable incredibly early both on nodes and in stores so I don't really need to go into the uh, nitty gritty. If you've played this game for 12 minutes, you've seen at least one or two shield characters farmable. Uh, you've probably opened an orb and gotten one. You definitely opened with shield medic, who is a very good healer across the board. Shield security has multiple different access points. Uh, shield trooper, I believe, has two different access points when they're being raided, uh, and a couple of them are actually farmable outside of that. So all in all, pretty accessible the two exceptions to that rule of course are the legendary nick fury who is one of the weirder characters to unlock in the game as you require a full team of cree minions minions specifically minions in order to you know unlock him why storyline i guess whatever whatever made them the most money i guess that made the most sense which is why it's probably gonna be retired because no one's spending that money anymore so shield like you can see uh pretty good with nick fury as a matter of fact arguably uh, amazing with nick fury as far as what their team can accomplish and of course the last character on shield that uh you would consider is colson colson is not available he is accessible uh you cannot ever target farm colson every day you can get a arbitrary number of attempts to pull colson out of an orb in which uh his drop rate is incredibly low and even then you can't guarantee you will unlock him at any reasonable time so he doesn't fall under farmable he falls under the available category which is like any premium orb exclusive you're probably not going to be getting colson anytime soon so that's why we're going to start with the actual shield team in this discussion so uh, availability pretty obvious they're all farmable early game uh, and they are a very reasonable early game team specifically without nick fury they will do quite a bit for you so let's talk about that usability now in the early stages of the game the shield team which primarily uh, consists of shield security shield medic shield operative shield trooper and shield assault will be a great arena team for beating up on common mishmash teams or even the defenders uh, they are a great modular team where you can use characters like quake who does have the shield tag black widow not necessarily captain america or hawkeye not great for that team comp but uh, miles or, or other characters you may unlock throughout the course of the game to improve their overall quality when you really do talk about the core of the shield minions it does tend to just be shield security and shield medic 
Shield Trooper obviously adds a little bit of damage to your team, Operative a little bit more survivability and turn control, and of course Assault is just a passive buff character as her ultimate doesn't do too much. Once you do unlock Nick Fury by hook by crook, whether it's because you direct targeted him or you just happen to be close enough when his event happened or his rework happened and he unlocks at three and Kree minions at three is easy, whatever it takes, uh, once you unlock Nick Fury, this team kind of opens up and they become incredibly modular. You tend to use characters like Operative on raids with uh, the Fury Shield team and you, you kind of forego Shield Trooper because you don't need the damage, you need the control. Uh, raids are always about how well you can sustain until if they become trivial and then it's just about how quickly you can kill everything. So in the early stages when you're learning how to progress through U5, U6, and even U7, uh, well, no, I'm sorry, not U7. Well, overall, yeah, even U7, it's about uh, sustaining and learning how to uh, do the fights until you are overpowered for the fights. Uh, and one thing that Fury Shield team is very good at, especially in U6, is sustain and in, of course, Greek raids. So once you get Nick Fury using the team of Shield Security, Shield Assault, Shield Operative, Nick Fury, and Medic are absolutely phenomenal at making sure that your team stays alive long enough on the raid nodes to be able to progress, as well as have complete control and value out of their basics, which allows you to save their big attacks like Shield Security Zolt or Shield Medic's Heal um, for you know, the next raid. They're very good at that. Uh, you can end up using characters like Trooper over Assault or Operative for uh, more personal attacks where it doesn't matter how long you sustain, it matters uh, how much damage you do. Uh, this way you can use them on Arena Offense and guarantee take out characters when you need to. As a matter of fact, Trooper ends up being very good in the mirror match uh, when someone else is using Assault because while they may be critting more, they tend to be critting Shield Security who is taunting. And you can use your shield trooper attack to really take out that one character when the opportunity comes up. So there's a lot of little uh, modular things you can do with this team. They are very good on offense and war. They are pretty okay on defense and war. One of the reasons why they were uh, always an offense team is because they were immediately hard countered by the Brotherhood and everyone had a Brotherhood team on offense. There was no reason to put them on defense because they were able to beat so many teams. They were the original skeleton key for a war victory. So you'd put Fury Shield out early pre Colson, and then, you know, a Brotherhood team would beat them and then you'd be like, uh oh, I guess, uh, guess I'm in trouble now. But that all changed when Colson came out. So Colson, who uh, does kind of increase their usability, but only explicitly in one game mode. Colson makes them one of the best war defense teams. Uh, and any investment you have in both Shield and Colson at the time to make the swap will uh, benefit you and that team, and of course, your entire alliance. Now, as a result, you lose a very good offense team, but as time progresses, and teams show up as having very few or far between counters, uh, they end up being better on war defense. So up to the point where you unlock Colson, Fury Shield is an offense team, a raid team, and you don't actually lose the fact that they're a raid team later. I still use them in any skill-based beta raid. I, anytime a skill node comes up, I just bring in my Fury Shield team and walk right through it because they're all skill. But Colson himself being a tech character, uh, as well as uh, clearly being better on war defense and making that team better on war defense kind of changes what you did. So any investment you had in shield early made them useful to you for whatever some of the uh, longer time played players in the game will probably tell you that like we use Fury Shield for everything and now they're just a defense team. But for some of the newer players or players who played for less than a year, probably unlikely that they've invested that heavily in shield. So they might have just worried about shield when they unlocked Colson, which is actually pretty par for the course. I don't think you need to worry about shield. I think they're just the team you get as time progresses. And I also think Fox next believes that too, but uh, there are some breakpoints for shield. And I want to get into that now as we just start discussing tier fours and what to do. So we're going to start off with just the minions. Okay. Shield, shield assault uh, is a very simple character. She has a sadness grenade, it doesn't do damage, 
uh, she has a barrage that actually doesn't remove positive effects because it's only one and it's a 50% chance. Tier 4 it doesn't increase the chance, just adds a little bit of damage. Meh, not a big deal. Uh, airborne is where the point of contention comes in. I have quite a bunch of people tell me that you have to tier 4 this ability. Uh, they've been telling me that for a very long time. I don't think they were right, as I haven't tier 4 it yet, and it appears as though I'm doing just fine. The main reason why is because they gain 40% extra crit chance, right? Now in your head, you say, well, 50% extra crit chance is better than 40%, correct? But everyone has a base crit chance of about 10%, right? So everyone at 40% with a level 4 ability upgrade uh, has a 50-50% chance. So one in every two attacks is going to crit, and since a lot of the team's turn rewinds are based on crit, it's a huge deal. Now, if you add that 10%, it goes to 60. Uh, still about 50-50. Doesn't change. And since shield doesn't do a lot of AOE turn rewind stuff, it's all about single target turn rewind, for me that extra 10% ain't worth 200 tier 4s. If tier 4s were uh, throwing a party and there were like the favor and everyone got a whole bunch, if I got 10,000 today, yeah, maybe I'd end up finishing this character off after tier 4 and you know entire teams like Fantastic Four or Supernatural but ultimately this doesn't necessarily matter too much um, and on war defense giving Coulson 40% extra crit that's just kind of weird because it's only on war defense whatever he needs the crit so I will say though the level 5 doesn't seem to affect Coulson it might I haven't clicked it I don't know but uh, according to this it doesn't even if it does Coulson does have a base crit ch chance so it's not making it 100, it's not even making it 75, I'm not getting out of bed for it. I don't think this is even kind of worth it. Moving on to the next character, it is Shield Trooper. Um, I know a lot of people with high red stars on Shield Trooper that advocate for uh, investing heavily into him. I also know a lot of people that say he takes no mini uniques, correct, but mini uniques um, are problem A and problem B through Z are all the other materials, so investing in Shield Trooper is not a great option. That said, he is a decent damage dealer, and the most important thing I will say is that fire support is based on his own attack, not based on his uh, basic, it's not an assist, it's just a specific ability, and it guarantees reduced speed bar, so bringing this up to 250, sure, um, I guess so. You really are trying to get a lot of value out of him, so it makes sense, but I wouldn't, uh, I don't think he's that integral to any version of the shield team that that damage needs to be huge. Unless, of course, you already have a ridiculously high-powered uh, shield trooper, then go for it, right? Building, that's fine. Overwatch is already a ridiculous attack. Uh, I hate this tier 4 because it only adds 20% piercing. It doesn't add to the base damage. So even though 20% piercing is like 26% damage because piercing ignores armor, it's still not nearly enough for me to care about how much extra this is, so I wouldn't touch this with a 10-foot pull. And uh, Rife... Like, it's damage. He's a damage dealer. Um, the only one that does make sense is fire support, everything else, whatever. Uh, shield operative, none. Zero tier fours, none. Doesn't need the extra focus, none of them, none of them need it. N n none of them. They all have phenomenal focus. And I don't even think you use her on the team with Coulson on war defense. I've seen some people try, it doesn't matter. Coulson has enough focus. Coulson gets his focus from his gear, so it, you don't need any of this. Um, the extra focus and the extra focus of the characters, nope, they all do what they're supposed to do. And since crit uh, guarantees turn rewind and turn rewind can't be resisted, the focus doesn't matter, not useful. Extraction, 300% healing for a single target. Get out of here, I'm not even talking about it. Snapshot, doesn't increase the chance of the crit. Doesn't increase the turn meter, just increases damage. You do use this attack a lot, and it also will increase the amount of damage she does on her assist. And remember, the assists also have a chance of turn rewind. So I guess you could. I wouldn't, though. She's pretty much the first one left off the team after you use them for raids and definitely for anything else. She doesn't have a lot of value outside of her team, so I wouldn't put a single tier 4 into her. I, I haven't even brought her up past tier 10. Uh, Shield Medic, phenomenal. Uh, now, one of the biggest complaints a lot of people will have is that the level 6 is 400 healing. It's technically 2,000 healing because it heals all of the shield characters, but come on. 
tier four, tier three ability materials, like those are a dime a dozen now. Tier four ability materials, get out of here. Not yet, not for a long time. Um, fighting fit is pretty much everything. Uh, this is what makes her great. Uh, she's great outside of shield because uh, she has a 50% chance to do that. Uh, on shield, they get an additional regen stack. Uh, that wasn't necessarily the reason to make this investment. It was that 30 to 20% chance to give them a pretty decent heal and regen. Uh, really good raid healer, really good independent healer, really good war healer. Good character all around. One of the better healers in the game. Uh, that said, come on. Come on. We're not we're not putting tier fours in shield mate. It's not gonna happen. Shield security is uh hilariously uh, bulky, tanky, and does a ton of damage. He's like one of the best all around characters um, in the game, let alone in shield. Uh, he has a reflexive taunt, he has a very high block chance. Uh, he gains more block chance on the shield team. That doesn't matter. But every time Nick Fury summons a minion, uh, he gets more block chance. It's crazy, right? So if he's already taunting, feel free to use that Nick Fury summon and watch him block more and more and more and more. Uh, and of course, Coulson counts because they just couldn't say shield non-minions because then that would make him too good when you put Captain America on the team. Never mind. Uh, when ally drops below 50% health, gain taunt. Any ally. If it's Nick Fury or a shield, Gain defense up or Coulson on defense, whatever. They just added a whole bunch of extra text on this character. Really good, it's called a reflexive taunt. Very useful at saving people. Really only useful on his team though, because if he doesn't have that defense up and that high block chance, he ain't gonna last. You know, like he's just gonna go down. That said, uh, and yeah, I don't think that 5% extra block base chance is gonna make too much of a difference. It was 5% on both. If it was guaranteed to have like a 100% block chance or something, maybe but nah uh, crowd control does a ton of damage but it hits twice pretty much every time pretty much every time yeah every time and uh 50 on both is actually 100 percent overall damage so yeah if you really want him to hit really hard this is a great ability i won't really do it he hits pretty hard on his own i don't think he needs it but again i'd also have a gear tier 13 one because i brought him into dark dimension accidentally on as a joke um Pretty okay. Stun Baton, damage plus slow. This is just more damage. He does pretty good damage. Feel free to make him do more damage. That's it. Uh, now, we'll talk about Nick Fury. Nick Fury uh, does require a handful of tier fours. The first being Director of Shield. The 20% chance makes it a solid 50%, so that means every time he takes a turn, it's a coin flip as to whether or not him and Shield minions all gain speed up. That is totally worth it. The 10% chance uh, bonus to assist brings it a 30% chance. Uh, this is a lot of text, more or less. Uh, if Nick Fury is present and there's a hero on the team, someone might assist. The more heroes there are, the more chances to assist. And of course, all shield minions also can assist. So, all in all, pretty cool. Obviously works well with Coulson. We'll talk about that in a second. But uh, this is one of the most important abilities, uh, second uh, to max reinforcements. The difference is you gain the ability to uh, gain a third shield summon. Now, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say this is worth the investment anymore as uh, maybe the red star rework making the shield minions have red stars on them. That depends on your red stars on Nick Fury, I guess. Uh, but all in all, that extra chance and a little bit more summon minion damage. Nah, not really. You were almost always guaranteed, I'm sorry, you were always guaranteed to get an operative and security at two. Now you don't know which other one you want. And um, that's it. I don't know if this is necessarily as worth it. Uh, the two minions you can see also have the base uh, power now of Nick Fury. They aren't necessarily talking about the red stars, but decent damage. That's actually a pretty decent amount of health, assuming these are accurate numbers. That is a very decent amount of health for a summon minion. Um, they are what they are. Uh, Rally, no, just n no. Uh, I, I care about percentages and the only way to get a higher boost of percentage is putting gear in a character. Going from eight to 10K, uh, this might make a very big difference on war defense on a 400 or 500K Fury Shield team. It doesn't make a bit of a difference for using this team for literally anything else, kind of a waste. <laughs> on war defense Colson heals as well someone got really lazy with that text custom icer 
uh, just damage, so not worth the tier 4, but it is a good ability, and it always chains, and sometimes it generates one ability energy if he crits. Obviously, the higher the crit chance in your team, the better that is, but over 50%, you're still coin flipping it. It's not going to make too much of a difference. It only does grant energy to adjacent allies, so... Uh, depending on where you place him, there could be two characters, it could be one. Sometimes he wants to be really close to Coulson so he can do more stuff. He doesn't really basic that often. It's usually like one or two turns before other energy has shown up. Not that important. He doesn't need many tier fours, but he is all in all a good character. Uh, so if you put at least in Director of Shield, it will be enough to make the Shield team work. So talking about just that core of the Shield team, the we'll call it the offensive Shield team, where you use them for PvE, that team does have some requirement but they don't need much to be successful in whatever game content you can bring them in uh, the biggest issue with the shield team will always be that they're all skill they all take skill gear it's very hard to level up a lot of skill characters but if you talk about the holy trinity of the shield team which a lot of teams do have two or three holy pieces uh nick fury shield medic and shield security as the core of the team then the other two characters can literally be anybody you want they don't have to be shield characters and you'll probably have a pretty decent go of it overall that said with the advent and the introduction of agent colson we have a slightly different team on our hands now um, taking a quick look at colson's kit i'm going to discuss his kit uh, in two different ways uh, the first way is right now and it is sure you could probably use colson outside of war defense why? Well, no, why? He's a tech character. There are better tech characters. There are better controller tech characters. There are better global tech controller characters. <laughs> like, like he's good. And if you do happen to have high red stars, that's great. One of the things I believe personally, especially when it comes to war defense, is the team doesn't have to be super duper strong. You know, it doesn't have to be four or five hundred k. It is going to require a response. Um, and on, if there's no response to the team, right? If, if you're using a custom team or if there isn't a, a one for one hard counter team, like Hydra doesn't necessarily have a hard counter team, uh, technically the Inhumans, right? Uh, and you can beat them with a couple of other teams, but overall it, it's kind of the Inhumans uh, is the hard counter. So if the team doesn't even have that one hard counter, then how strong they are means that they can't use the latch key or the skeleton key teams like uh x-men or you know an ultron team or a bkt they can't use a team that's just really good at, at beating random teams uh, and uh, if the team does have a hard counter like a specific hard counter then it doesn't actually matter how strong they are because someone's going to use that counter the only difference is whom and depending on where you are and what time in the war um, it might not matter if your team is 200 or 250 or 300 or 350 because someone's going to use whatever team they have to beat it and you may end up taking a weaker team out early that uh, you might need that team later or they might need that team later so uh, I don't necessarily like to invest in more characters I don't like to invest in characters that I don't see value in uh, like actually see like watch the value all I can see is the result of my team uh, and Coulson kind of fits that bill. Now, I know a lot of people who say, like, I have a really strong Coulson, and he does all great things for me, and I brought him into this, and I'm like, great, that's wonderful. Again, write it in a story, print it out, hang it on your window, so other people can read it. That doesn't, like, anecdotal evidence isn't evidence. You're just telling a story, and that's great. I love stories. You know that. I'm telling a story right now. But just because a seven-star, six-red-star Coulson does very good work in a weird game mode doesn't mean Coulson does very good work in a game mode. Coulson is a war defense character. He makes the entire shield team war defense. Uh, I don't think you need to put too much into them outside of war. But when we talk about war, which is what we're doing now, I'm going to look at all these abilities and determine which ones are the most important, starting with the agent. If Coulson drops below 50% health, fill speed bar by shield medic by 60%. On war defense, gain 40% max health. Shield allies gain 40% max health. Yes just yes all of it it's just it's so much text you know the rule if there's that much text come on uh granted it's only for war defense but clearly for war defense you probably want all of these abilities 
Um, and that 60% turn meter does actually matter in war because turn meter is relevant. Uh, I would, this is no brainer. Tier 4 this for war. Teamwork. Uh, just to clarify, on war defense, instead of clearing three positive effects from the enemy with the most damage, you clear all positive effects, call two allies instead of one, 30% uh, damage to all enemies. Uh, this is totally worth it on war. No joke. For real. I just haven't done it. Why? I'm a bad person. My alliance hates me. I never did. Honestly, I just don't want to put the investment in it. I have better characters that help me and my alliance in different ways. Uh, I meant specifically in a room that I don't care what happens because guess what? People are going to use X-Men to beat or Brotherhood to beat my Coulson team. Uh, so I don't care. They're going to use them. That's no one's gonna try to no one's gonna pay attention to the fact that Colson doesn't have that investment. They're gonna treat it like he does. And that's how I've been hedging my bets. I wouldn't recommend you do that. If you do want a really good version of this team, he should get this uh investment. This is a pretty good ability. Uh the extra two allies with the most damage to attack the allies with the most damage is big. It's all big. All great. EMP punch. Uh I don't actually like the tier four on this. Versus uh remove all versus, you know remove three uh by the time you do this i don't know how many more buffs they have on them but okay you know it, it is what it is i know a lot of people swear by this uh again i've never seen it i've seen my team get defense wins one or two so they did something right um i think on paper this is great but on paper leads to a lot of lies or half truths so I do think this is a fine investment. I just don't see uh, as much, especially because of the small amount of increase of damage. Maybe if this was 50% damage or something, I'd be like, oh no, that's totally great. 10%, eh, they just really wanted nice round numbers on there and I don't dig that. Uh, and Night Night Gun, just damage, doesn't add anything else. So of these, I think the bottom two are probably the most important, as with most characters, uh, for war. I think EMP Punch is okay for war, feel free to do it, and then I think Night Night Gun is mediocre. So we're now going to talk about TCP breakpoints. TCP breakpoints for the shield team without Coulson, like the offensive shield team. Uh, 100k version of that shield team is doing okay in probably a handful of game modes, U6 maybe. Um, many raids they can be used in you're probably going to feel 150k for that team to be the most impactful right so if you have 150k offensive shield team or higher and yeah i'm grouping it all in because the higher after 150k like what are you doing just more damage and more healing like they're going to do the same thing they don't get crazy um i think they're fine defense uh war defense specifically i think you get away with a lot less I think if you have Agent Coulson, Nick Fury, Shield Security, Shield Medic, and then whatever, Operative, Trooper, whichever one you want, right? Uh, they, you can drop a team that's like 100k. And, you know, they're all five star. <laughs> they're all whatever the bare minimum they need to be. They all have their tier fours in, but they may be gear tier nine or ten. And I think that that team is still going to require or demand respect. So while on the offense team for you to accomplish stuff that team needs to be stronger if you're a newer player or if you're a player that's not prioritizing them or if nick fury becomes retired and goes into the iron man style of always available and you just manage to unlock a three-star nick fury or something then you may not work on those characters that early you might but you might not uh, and then as a result you may end up with colson so you may end up just placing 100 to 120k shield team on defense and it'll probably get you a lot more wins because some people just might not have the existing counters they might not have a strong enough version of a team or they might have to punch down so dramatically that you just saved one of your later alliance members teams so i think the defense team doesn't need to be that strong obviously the stronger they are the better they'll be but shield is weird like that so thanks for watching this and do me a favor comment below and let me know if you remember when Fury Shield was the team to be, if you used Fury Shield when it was the team to be, or on the other side, if you're a newer player, uh, if you even bother unlocking Nick Fury right now, how excited you are to get there. 
Uh, just let me know what you think. Uh, this one was kind of a weird video because it's kind of a VH1 where are they now for me? Where S.H.I.E.L.D. I remember spending a lot of money to get a six star Nick Fury to do Dark Dimension 1 on the first pass. And that's it. Like now I'm just kind of sitting here with this war defense team that I'm kind of off on. So that's just my own memory of the change of things. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's more of a nostalgia glasses. But where do you guys stand? Let me know. Comment below. Anyway, thanks again so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangieri. And I'll catch you later.